Hi guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. I know that this is a very stressful time, which is what today's video is going to be about, are some helpful tools and tips and resources to help you navigate the anxiety you're probably feeling and the resulting impact on your eating disorder recovery that that might be having. So this is sort of for two purposes, to help you deal with anxiety and for those in recovery, to kind of help you manage and maintain as much as you can during this period. First and foremost, I wanna say whatever you're feeling is valid. I am never gonna sit here and say that you are not entitled to whatever you're feeling. This is an unprecedented event for so many of us, but I think that there are some ways for us to mitigate how much it's impacting, particularly our mental health. That's really what needs to be prioritized is health overall, physical, and mental because your mental health has such a bearing on your physical health so this is a video to come back to if you're feeling overwhelmed or uncertain hopefully this is just a nice comforting safe place to come back to on the internet when things feel like they might be getting to be a bit too much for you the first recommendation I want to make whether or not you're in any kind of mental health recovery eating disorder recovery whether it's anxiety that you are trying to manage is to really first of all set some reasonable expectations for yourself it is not reasonable to expect that you're going to be thinking or feeling as you normally would this is a scenario that is so new to pretty much all of us so adjust your expectations of yourself accordingly this is particularly important if you're in recovery if you're somebody who's used to challenging themselves and pushing forward and setting new goals each week it's okay to enter periods of maintenance and management which we'll talk about but it's not necessarily fair for you to expect that you should be on top of everything given you're adjusting to a totally new set of parameters and information and that we're getting conflicting information and updates and now you're trying to navigate a recovery or your anxiety on top of what would be to somebody without those issues pretty challenging the next tip that I want to give or advice that I want to provide is in relation to treatment or therapy I've heard from a lot of people saying I can't go to therapy because I'm in isolation or I can't afford therapy because I am working in hospitality and I don't have shifts at the moment because everything's being shut down temporarily. So what do I do? How do I access treatment? How do I access help? First and foremost, if you are already seeing treatment providers, therapist, dietitian, doctor, coach, etc., before you assume that those services are no longer available to you just because you can't afford their standard fee, what they usually charge you, please don't make that assumption. Please get in contact with them. Give them the opportunity, as I've done with my own clients, to say, hang on a second, I can actually offer you a reduced rate or a sliding scale price for whatever period of time you need it because I'm financially in a position where I can offer that to clients and I know that there would be other professionals who can as well that's not to guarantee that everybody can but before you make the decision and sort of take that support away from yourself because you assume that it's not an option please make sure to send an email or make a phone call and figure out if there's something that can be put in place to keep that treatment consistent for yourself. This is not a time to put your mental health at the bottom of the priority list, but you can kind of get it into a position where you can still dedicate time to it, but make it affordable and still make it accessible for yourself. So please get into contact with treatment providers. If it's a matter of isolation and you usually see your treatment provider in person, Again, please get in touch with them, figure out what the options are as far as maybe web sessions, phone sessions. I know that here in Australia recently, it's been changed so that you can get a few sessions with a psychologist over Skype or over phone and still be able to claim your Medicare rebate. So it used to be that you could never have a phone session or a Skype session without paying the full rate, but now your mental health plan or your rebate would still apply for a few sessions. Find out from your provider whether they provide that and also uh, sort of the specific way that that's gonna impact your rebate. Go and do a little bit of research for yourself. Again, don't just assume that it's not an option. If you are somebody who has neither of those options available, who financially has had their capacity reduced to the point where they can't 
afford a therapist or a coach or a, or a dietitian for the time being, or you are logistically, geographically, physically unable to attend sessions and your treatment provider can't do web sessions or phone sessions, then my suggestion is to get some resources which you can access at home, which give you some practical guidance and something to rely on and something to work on in the meantime. My top suggestions for this would be, number one, the eight keys to recovery from an eating disorder book and workbook from Carolyn Coston. There is a reason why this is the one text that I am constantly recommending and telling people to get, particularly if they are not in treatment or they're waiting for treatment to please find this resource. It is the most practical implementation of coping skills and tools and challenging your thinking. It sort of covers all the bases of eating disorder recovery in a text. It's extraordinary. I work on it with clients all the way through and it changes lives. If you are financially constrained to the point where you can't afford those books, there is the Eating Disorder Workbook by Katie Morton, which when I checked on Apple Books this morning was $2.99 Australian, I believe. So cup of coffee or you know, a couple of bucks that you can throw at that workbook for you to invest your time and dedicate some time each day to working through workbooks like that. Uh, there are a multitude of other resources. Brain Over Binge is a good book to read. There are lots and lots and lots of eating disorder options in terms of literature. Another thing I've heard from a lot of people about is the sense of being stuck at home with lots of food. People who tend to have a history of binging behaviors or present and current binging behaviors or binging purging behaviors. There are people who are concerned that they're going to return to restriction because of that isolation or that their restriction is going to worsen and increase. And here is my number one tip to combat behaviors, to combat those urges, to surf them, delay them, stop them, whatever degree to which you can, you know, delay or put off or stop completely, is to reach out, to communicate, doesn't matter what the diagnosis is or what the behavior is. We know, clinically speaking, I know from working with people for two years, the most effective way to delay, put off, stop a behavior is to reach out, is to connect, whether that's to a loved one, whether or not that's on the What Mia Did Next forum, whether or not that is being part of sort of a recovery community group online, whether it's on Instagram or on Facebook, somewhere that's responsible and helpful and healing. It might be a lifeline, an eating disorder hotline like the Butterfly Foundation or the NEDA. Again, planning contact with your therapist, with your coach, planning appointments, being accountable, showing up, planning Skype calls. This applies for recovery or anxiety in this time, making sure given we don't have a lot of physical connection that we are prioritizing and planning social connection, whether or not that's group Skype calls. Maybe you can all jump on like a Discord hangout and watch a movie together. There's a few apps and websites online. I'll put a list in the description box below where you can kind of play games together. I heard a couple of people talking about that. I'm too old to know what they are, but I'm going to do the research for you guys and it's going to be in the description box, unless it isn't. And then maybe we'll take this part of the video out. <laughs> Connection generally at this time is so important, but if you are feeling the need to use a behavior, that is an indication that you're anxious, you're fearful, you're disconnected, you're lonely, and the behavior is not going to fix that. That is like trying to fix a leaking sink by painting your living room connecting, reaching out, saying, I'm having a hard time, I wanna use behavior, or today has been hard, or how about this coronavirus thing? It feels really, really terrifying. You don't have to specifically say it's an eating disorder thing, but reach out, connect, talk to somebody. Very often, just the act of advocating for yourself in that way, putting it into words, typing it out, Picking up the phone, just that alone is sometimes action enough to dissuade us from using a behavior, to delay it, to stop it, because we're giving ourselves a really good chance of even being able to challenge it within ourselves. And then well, when we hear back from that person or we interact with another person, that's just a bonus, right? We're trying to give yourself the best chance to challenge internally. And by externalizing it, saying it, getting it out, that's the best way to get to that outcome. In addition to reaching out to people, connecting, communicating, uh, telling people what's going on, how you're feeling, it's also important to implement other areas of positive distraction as well. Not avoidance, I'm not gonna tell you to shut down your feelings or invalidate your feelings. 
you need to be able to give yourself enough permission to sit in them without staring at them, right? Without torturing yourself with them. Things like watching YouTube videos, which aren't doomsday videos. On my Instagram, I've been suggesting Instagram accounts, which are joyful and a bit of a break for your brain, like doggos doing things is a great account to follow right now. Upworthy, tanks good news. All of these things will be in the description box below. Something to give your head a break. We're gonna get to how much doomsday related media and news you might be internalizing right now. That will be a later point. Positive distraction at the moment is going to be very, very, very important. If you are dealing with anxiety or eating disorder recovery, maybe both, the best combination for positive distraction is a mental distraction and a physical distraction. So that might be listening to a podcast and coloring in watching a movie and playing a game on your phone. It might be playing a board game with family members or cards or actually getting cards and playing solitaire with yourself. Something that gives your mind enough of a distraction that it's not zeroing in on your anxiety or your panic, but it's also engaging you physically. This is really important, particularly when you're trying to get yourself out of the headspace of wanting to use a physical behavior. Because as we know, eating disorder behaviors are they have a mental component, it comes out of here, but you act on it physically. So by being able to have that duality of purpose with a distraction measure, being able to occupy the brain and occupy yourself physically, it's a much more successful route to avoiding a behavior or putting it off or stopping it altogether. Coloring in, knitting, crafting, taking up a new hobby, trying out some new creative pursuits, writing, reading. Reading is a great one. Your mind has to go so intensely into what you're reading and what that's conjuring up for you internally, that it's an incredible way to get your brain temporarily off really intense subjects. Doing some grounding, healthy, helpful movement could be really beneficial if you're at a place in your particular circumstance where you can do that. Obviously, if you're at a place in recovery where you're being told not to engage in movement, then please don't. Yoga with Adrian, who will also be linked below, has put up a playlist recently providing yoga routines on, you know, trying to contain your feelings of anxiety, etc., and trying to ease them. So I'll link that below. Gentle stretching is a good one. Go and look up mindfulness and meditation exercises here on YouTube. That is the wonder of the internet. All of these resources and skills and tools, so many of them are free. I'll put below some of my favorite either lengthy meditations, some of them will be shorter, especially if mindfulness or meditation is new to you. It's not a good idea to sort of pressure yourself to do a two hour meditation. So I'll put some uh, of my favorite mindfulness exercises in the comments below. I mean, the description box below uh, of various links so that you can explore those and maybe use those. Now onto the topic of the news that you're probably reading or your Twitter feed that you keep refreshing. Please stop doing that. I'm by no means saying that it isn't important to be informed right now. It absolutely is. But to be torturing ourselves with every update, every rumor, every, you know, early reporting of something is just going to impact your mental health, your ability to reason, your ability to cope, your ability to strategize and problem solve and to keep yourself out of the black hole. So my suggestion is this limit the amount of exposure that you have to overwhelming levels of information. Pick two times in a day when you check the news, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Not as soon as you wake up necessarily and not just before you go to bed, certainly not. Pick a couple of reputable sources, find your local government website and maybe a media outlet who you deem trustworthy. Spend 10 minutes on both twice a day, so 20 minutes total. And take from that the information that you need and then shut it down. Don't allow yourself to go into that slippery slope of um, information overload to the point where it's overwhelming and paralyzing and makes the information seeking redundant because you're just hurting yourself with it. You're not equipping yourself with knowledge that you can action. Where you can and when you can, sit in the sunshine, whether or not that's finding the sunniest spot in your house or apartment, or if you're able to, to sit outside for a certain amount of time every day, those things that remind us that there is a big wide world out there that will continue to go on, that this is not going to last forever, that you are not alone, that there are people out there who care about you and love you and support you. That's why I want you to go and follow accounts which show that we all really do care about each other, that we are all kind to each other because 
that just ain't gonna get clicks in the news, friends. Like I saw this beautiful video this morning on Upworthy of these flight attendants who found out that a bunch of kids on their plane had just had their college graduation canceled. So they did an impromptu graduation ceremony on the plane and it was so beautiful. And they are perfect strangers who don't have to do that stuff, don't have to think of each other in that way, and we do. We are inherently kind. That's my other point. When you see footage, which looks a bit like a zombie apocalypse movie, like I saw footage out of Venice yesterday where the whole city is just empty and a lot of people were really freaking out about that. And my take on it when I saw that was how incredible. This is clearly a reflection of how seriously people are taking this and how much they care about each other to do what is right, to do what is necessary to ensure the safety and health of other people. That's the perspective I'm choosing to look at it from. So... I think being able to switch up maybe some of our thinking about this and limiting how much doomsday messaging we're allowing in whilst doing our best to take care of ourselves physically and mentally is so important. People have also been saying to me that they're struggling with guilt. They feel really badly that other people are suffering so much and that they're not suffering as much as other people. They feel bad about the fact that they have access to supplies and, and that they're healthy and well. Here's the thing, guys. This is the opportunity to turn your eating disorders thoughts on its head when it tells you things like, you know, you don't deserve to be in a good position when other people are in such a bad position. You being in the best position you can be right now is the most selfless thing that you can do for other people. That is not me saying that people should be hoarding toilet paper. That does not put them in a great position. That just makes them panic buying uh, not going to use strong language in this video, but I'm sure you guys can imagine what I think for the people who are doing that. But you being as mentally and physically well as you can be right now is the best thing that you can do for your family, your friends, your neighbors, your city, your country, the world, your fellow humans. That is the best thing that you can do is to give yourself the best chance to be strong in your recovery, to manage your anxiety, to take care of your physical health. That's the absolute priority that has to be in place for everyone on behalf of everyone else. So when your eating disorder tells you that this is an opportunity to restrict or that you don't deserve to be safe and well in this period, well, it doesn't get to have it both ways, right? It can't say that you're selfish when your selfishness is by definition selfless because it's putting other people in a better position by you putting yourself in a better position like i said guys i'm going to put all of those recommendations and resources and anything else that i've mentioned in the description box below i will also put these lists in the description box below they will be over on the forum as well for those of you who aren't already on the forum please go and join up it is such a safe supportive wonderful environment. I think that particularly at a time like this, you'd really benefit from it. And if there was a number one recommendation, it would be for you guys to go and check out those workbook resources, because I really believe that regardless of your situation, for you to have that in your home, and you don't need to order the books physically. You don't need the hard copy. You can download the Kindle app for free on your phone, your iPad, your computer, and then buy the books and upload them. to. So the Kindle app is free and then go and buy either Katie Morton's book or Carolyn's books and you can have them with you. You don't have to have them delivered. If delivery has been shut down in your area, uh, you can have it digitally, you know, delivered to one of your devices. So that would be my big, 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 big recommendation to you guys. I would also love to hear your recommendations in the comments below. We did this as a live on Instagram and people had amazing suggestions and things they're doing to kind of make themselves feel more secure, safe, less anxious, more in charge of their recovery. Please leave your suggestions below. I know I've spoken really quickly in this video, but there's just, look at all my notes, guys. Look at them. I spent so much time on them and I barely got through all of them, but we did it. Obviously, these suggestions don't cover everyone's recovery ever, but I hope that they are broad yet specific enough to be able to help enough people that this video was worth doing. Please take care of yourselves. Like I said, that is so important right now for more than just you, but for the rest of us as well. What a fantastic way to argue back to your eating disorder with that concept in mind. It'll totally blow apart all of its arguments. This too shall pass, guys. Everything does. Let's just get through it. 
taking care of ourselves and each other as best we can. Okay, guys, I'll see you soon. Come and find me on Instagram and Twitter under what Mia did next. If you're feeling lonely, I am very active on Instagram at the moment and I will see you here with the next video. Okay, guys, much love. Take care. Bye.